guys, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So this is a special reading vlog because it is a challenge reading vlog. I'm going to be attempting a 24-hour readathon, and this readathon is inspired by a few things. One, just trying to sneak in a few more books before the end of the year, but it's predominantly inspired by the fact that in basically 24 hours from now, I have a dentist appointment for a root canal. And I have um, some dental fear, like I'm working on it, but I hate going to the dentist. So I thought what better way to distract myself for the next 24 hours is to just read a bunch of books. <laughs> so that is really what inspired this. Um, it's basically one mega distraction. Oh yes, welcome to my uh, 24 hour readathon, Reagan's ignoring reality before her upcoming dental appointment that she's been dreading for weeks. A. But that being said, the TBR for this video I'm so looking forward to. Obviously the books I tried to pick were very strategic, they are not super long, um, but they're all magical and lyrical and books that I feel like I am going to love. So without further ado, let's talk about it. The first book that's on my list is The Way Back by Gabrielle Savitt. This is a middle grade young adult story that's set in a small village in Eastern Europe and this village is very used to running into demons and sort of evil magical creatures and in fact these demons have their own land called the far country we follow two young kids as they basically go through the far country after death comes walking in their village and they're trying to make their way back i've heard such good things about this i've already read a book by gabrielle savitt i love his writing i feel like this is going to be a really dark story also a national book award finalist so i just feel like this will be a pretty quick read but a beautiful one and maybe a sleeper end of the year favorite. And then from there, I also have um, The Chosen and the Beautiful, which is a great Gatsby retelling, but it is a queer magical retelling that also centers a Vietnamese adoptee. I like the 20s for the glitz and glamour and the kind of like debauchery of it all. The Great Gatsby is a story that I enjoy, but I feel like these particular updates are really gonna escalate this tale to one that I feel like I might love even more. Um, I thought this was actually a YA book, but I'm very wrong, a lot of you guys have corrected me. This is an adult book, which actually makes me even more excited. <laughs> um, so I'm really looking forward to this. Again, not super short. I think this is below 300 pages, but I feel like it's going to be transportive, the writing, just all of the things that I like. I'm a simple girl. I love a magical sort of retelling of either a classic fave or just in general a fairy tale, the things that appeal to me. And then the last book I have on my TBR is The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and Led the Rebels There by Catherine M. Valente. This is book two to the Fairyland series. I read or reread book one a couple months ago and loved 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 it um so i actually have the audiobook of this so i'm going to be listening to this and hopefully relaxing with some of my favorite anti-anxiety legend of zelda <laughs> um so this is the third book that's on my tbr i feel like this is very achievable for me none of these books are like crazy long and i feel like all of them will really propel me through the pages just because of how like the style that they're written in so because of that, I am just really thrilled about this. Plus, three more books to tack on to my end of the year reading goal. I actually don't even know how many books I've read this year. I really should figure that out because the, the year ends in like a week. And it's kind of important that I know. But anyway, welcome to the start of this 24-hour readathon vlog. Happy to be here. Let's get started. Matilda is ready for this readathon. She's literally sleeping on her bowl. Okay, well, I'm not going to disturb you, Millie enjoy also oh i'm so proud i actually did some gift wrapping i think a christmas tree with a few gifts underneath just like kind of ties the whole thing together um, i always love picking out wrapping paper every year target came in clutch this time around naturally brewing a fresh pot of coffee just getting myself set up for success hazelnut duncan i couldn't find a holiday blend from starbucks but i love a duncan I love any, I love so many different types of coffee. <laughs> this one is very good, but anyway, this is doing its thing. I'm gonna read. Hi, so I've just been sitting here reading. I've read over the 100, over the 100 page mark of The Way Back, and I must say, I must say, I have been drawn in immediately. This book is 
so far exactly what I was hoping in terms of style and just writing and just like the overall quality of the story. For more context, first and foremost, this is a story that's inspired by Jewish folklore. So different individuals from those types of mythology and stories are already present are going to continue to be present. We follow our two main characters, Yehuda and Bluma, who live in a really small town in Eastern Europe. And the time exactly is a little vague, but at some point I would say in the mid 1800s, hundreds um and basically the story opens on in this small town we follow these two characters who are living you know they obviously know each other but due to like different circumstances and fate they are they basically cross paths with death in an unexpected way at the beginning of the story pluma's grandmother unexpectedly passed away and she basically is awake for it so when death comes knocking she basically witnesses it and hides um but also stumbles upon death's instrument that they misplaced and then yehuda's path is a little more complicated but he basically stumbles upon death in the forest when he's fleeing his home and due to these unexpected events with crossing death's past they basically find themselves fleeing and accidentally arriving in the far country which again is the land of demons um and they are one now just trying to figure out how in the world they got here i'm only 100 pages in so they've really just arrived and i'm assuming they're going to team up and try to make their way back but I really just cannot speak more positively about the writing style. I love how the story is being told and it just has a fairy tale quality in and itself. Again, I'm just a sucker for this type of story. It's just so transporting. It's also a perfect book so far to read during the winter time. It's set in the winter, it's cold, it's snowy, there's long treks through frozen landscapes and like, ooh, you just feel chilly in your core. And obviously, in terms of the characters, Bluma and Yehuda are just two young people um, kind of going out on their own albeit unfortunate adventure for themselves, but they're kind of like on the cusp of adulthood. Um, so they're like kind of metaphorically leaving the nest for the first time, but also like literally doing so in a very treacherous and dangerous way. And uh, I just, I read the first 100 pages really, really quickly and I'm just really enjoying it so far. I'm also really liking running into the different mythological creatures. Like for example, Death's Instrument is a spoon and like there's just like other references that are... I don't want to use the word like fun to come across because sometimes it can be a little treacherous, but it's like, oh, I know who that is or, ooh, I think I know what's going on. Like, you know what I mean? Because they're so famous. So it's cool to see it unfurling in front of us in this book. And then obviously this is a new story because we're following two characters in a fictional setting. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen, um, but I am a, lo a little under 30% of the way done. I think this book is 360 pages. I'm obviously striving to finish it tonight. Uh, which I don't feel like will be too much of an issue. I'm gonna start dinner here in a minute, but for now I'm just enjoying the faux fireplace. And then Matilda, I still, I don't think has moved. No, yeah, she's still, she's still laying on her bed. So just wanted to let you know, I have done some reading. Uh, I'm gonna continue to do some reading, but so far, so great with this book. Just wanted to show you my outfit before I went and changed <laughs> into pajamas. I've also read 150 pages of my book, which is great. Now I'm starting at dinner. I'm just making some like tacos tonight um, with some lime garlic rice. So just gotta get everything cooking, marinating or what have you. I'll be doing more reading, obviously, but that's the plan. Right, so dinner is in a good spot. I have the rice cooking. This is just some brown rice with some garlic, some lime zest, chicken stock. Oh, it's cooking. <laughs> it was on the keyboard I'm setting. I feel like I should really invest in a new rice cooker, but for now, this is my life. Uh, marinating the steak for the tacos, cut up the veggies. I'm gonna let this cook, let this marinate, and then I'll start cooking everything else up. If all my sauces on, sauces, spices on standby. Um, for when I also cook stuff. Well, that's that. 
All right. <laughs> Almost done. We have the lime rice. Veggies are cooked. Steak will go there. Clay wanted extra onions. Um, and I'm just cooking off the steak now and also making some black beans because I love black beans so much. Tacos are done and topped with Clay's homemade salsa. And uh, watching the bears probably will cry. Who knows if I'll watch the whole game? But I'll be back to reading soon. Faux fireplace is on. I've given up on the bears game because I need to read. I'm trying to succeed in my 24 hour readathon, so I'm gonna get back to reading The Way Back by Gabrielle Sevet. I'm really enjoying it. As I said, I've read about 150 pages, so I'm gonna try to finish it right now. Hi everyone, I have just past the 200 page mark of The Way Back and I am continuing to really enjoy this book. Honestly, I would say it's unfolding in a way that is slightly different than I was expecting, but I'm still really enjoying the ride. It's honestly a bit chaotic. The threads of the story almost feel like I'm like trying to just keep up and be able to grasp hold of everything as it's unfolding, but it also feels very purposeful that it's kind of confusing in a way like we're just being transported from place to place the other thing that i find interesting is going into this book i thought our two main characters were going to be traveling together but i would say they're both kind of on their own independent journeys that sometimes have intersection but each of them has basically gotten um, involved with accidentally <laughs> with some sort of powerful person from the far country some fallen angel or just powerful demon and they're kind of using them for their own political game demons in the far country are very useful for demons basically having anything that's like associated with being alive gets you far so having a human allows you to even enter the real world but um, I'm, I'm liking this book. I'm really curious to see how it's going to continue to expand. I do feel like the storylines are taking us to places I wasn't expecting. For example, I feel like we're almost zigzagging between the land of the living and the land of demons, which I think is kind of cool because I kind of expected it to be this sort of linear journey with like obstacles along the way, but it's sort of chaotic and dark in ways I wasn't fully anticipating. The writing continues to be really, really great. I'm also just really fascinated by all of this Jewish and Yiddish folklore. I think it's super cool and just incredibly immersive. Like if you love fairy tale retellings, like this is definitely a good book to pick up. Um, and it's also making me want to like read and research more about these myths myself, just because to be honest, I don't have a huge religious education. <laughs> in any religion at all so when i encounter things centering like fallen angels or just like other stuff that's like rooted in sort of a religious history i don't know much um but uh i'm going to keep reading obviously i'm striving to finish this book tonight but i'm liking it quite a bit like i have sometimes no idea what's going on but like not in a way that's like bad like in a way that's like just give it a second reagan i'm sure he'll figure it out <laughs> But uh, I'm gonna get back to it. I have no idea where Bluma or Yehuda's journey is going to take either of them, but they've both taken something that they shouldn't have, got stuck in the land of demons, and now I think they're trying to return those things somehow, even though it's hard for them to return them. And here we are. So, great stuff. Matilda's uh, making herself comfortable. She has been snoring up a storm. And I have officially 100 pages left of the way back. And I'm really liking it. The story, I would say about halfway through, kind of shifted in this, like, not I don't want to say new direction by any means, but it's more like our two main characters in the first half were, like, being overwhelmed by the tide, being taken for a journey kind of forcibly, versus now I feel like they're kind of trying to seize back their own fate and destiny for themselves and are like fighting against the tide and kind of entering the far country with like a different set of expectations and also a plan. And I think it's a really interesting shift and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I also just love this pervasiveness of death and like, I always like when death is personified into like a physical thing. I always think it's really an interesting topic always explored, especially in stories like this, so I'm liking it quite a bit. I also feel like if you love The Bear and the Nightingale, this is a book that you should probably check out.
cheers morning everyone i'm up it's a gloomy day um and it's root canal day <laughs> The amount of people texting in my life wishing me good luck today both makes me feel good but also like a little embarrassed because that means so many people know how much I don't like going to the dentist so everyone's like oop big day for Reagan. But anywho all of that to say is that I actually started my readathon pretty late yesterday like around 3.20 um like honestly closer to 4. Um, but that means I have all morning and most of the afternoon ahead of my appointment to continue to read as much as I possibly can. I also did complete the entirety of The Way Back last night, which is 350 pages, I want to say, of words. Oh, maybe not actually. Nope, nope. I think this is longer than that. <laughs> It was pretty late when I wrapped it up. Yeah, it is 360 pages. So I've read 360 pages so far for this 24 hour readathon, which I am pleased with. I also read an entire book. And in terms of my final thoughts and feelings on this book, I really liked it. For me, this is a type of book that I would love. I do want to say like, it is a bit confusing. It is a bit disjointed, but I personally did not mind that. And I really enjoy kind of fumbling my way through this story much like the characters were trying to fumble their way just to reclaim their lives and I do feel like there is a very clear like halfway point where the story itself shifts and the dynamic of the story shifts and seeing our two main characters then start to work together and kind of going on their own personal quest. I really liked that. Just seeing all the different types of fallen angels and demons as well kind of function within this far country was so cool. The writing, just everything, I really enjoyed it and i just feel like if you love heavy mythology based stories the bear and the nightingale um neil gaiman the something at the end of the lane i feel like this would be a book that you would enjoy it's kind of weird it's dark but it's also like super rich with storytelling so really like that read 360 pages there so now me and my gin bookmark are gonna move on to book number two, which is The Chosen and the Beautiful, which is under 300 pages, and I think a good book to kind of marathon throughout this morning. And this is another lyrical, beautifully written retelling of famous stories, but a little more modern in that this is a Great Gatsby retelling, as I said. So I'm gonna start this now, see how far I can get. I feel like I could possibly knock this out pretty quickly, but my attention span these days, I feel like I read 30 pages and I'm like, now you get an award. <laughs> another 10, another reward. TikTok break. Um, but anywho, I'm rambling. So I'm gonna get to reading now. I'm gonna get nice and cozy. Christmas tree is on, faux fireplace is on, coffee is here. I have no idea where Matilda is. She must have not joined me this morning like she usually does. But anywho, good morning. I've read some, gonna read some more, still ignoring my dentist appointment. Hi, so I've been reading. I've only read 40 pages of The Chosen and the Beautiful. But I do feel like 40 pages, this book is only 260 something pages long, so 40 pages is actually a decent chunk. And so far I'm really appreciating this reimagining. First and foremost, it's been a hot minute since I've read The Great Gatsby. I was a senior in high school many a moon ago, and I think the movie came out my freshman year of college, so I'm aging myself. The point is, it's been a long time since I've encountered this particular story. Um, so I did Google some things. I was like, who's this again? Who's this? So now I feel very rooted, but I'm rambling. Point is, I'm actually really liking a lot of the changes the author is making and the additions the author is making. And I feel like it's a very interesting approach. So first and foremost, there is magic and like demonic stuff that's now present within this world, which just fits so well. Two main reasons, one, the obvious opulence of this time period, the extreme wealth and debauchery, sort of having magic intertwined in all of that, especially demonic connections intertwined with that. And then the fact that it's all pretty much illegal in line with the prohibition, which again, like if you're wealthy enough, the laws don't touch you, which is very much the case in The Great Gatsby. Uh, the other major change I would say from the get is the narrator is now Jordan Baker, um, which I like. And Jordan Baker was, from what I recall, like a relatively important 
side character and was like Daisy's friend, but now she's front and center in the store and kind of narrating everything kind of going on around her. She's also Vietnamese, and so she's kind of an unusual person to be running around these circles for a variety of reasons. Not only is she singled out for her profession, being a professional golfer and her desire to not really get married, um, but also she's singled out because she is othered due to her origin. Um, and seeing her relationship from her point of view with Daisy, I think is a really interesting ad. And I think just adds a lot of additional stakes to Daisy's character. Daisy has always been an enigma to me, so I think it's interesting, but I really feel like I knew going into the story it was a queer retelling of The Great Gatsby, and I feel like it's going to be between Gatsby and Nick, but we'll see. I feel like it could also be between Daisy and Jordan, but like, who's to say? Who's to say? But so far, I just feel like the changes are really smart from the ad of magic, kind of amps up the opulence. That paired with a demonic connection kind of pairs up the debauchery and kind of the tinge darkness to it all. And then kind of seeing the story from a fresh point of view, I think is smart. So liking this, only read 40 pages, so I'm only kind of getting a handle on the vibe, but the vibe is good, gonna keep reading. Obviously, I'm gonna try to finish this book now. Will I ever leave this couch? Probably not. I'm back so fast, you don't even know. I had another thought. The reason why I'm really enjoying Baker's narration and also the inclusion of Daisy from Baker's point of view is that it adds a more feminine aspect to The Great Gatsby where traditionally the women in that story are either treated as objects or just kind of accessories to the men who are moving within that story, in my opinion. More of their own personal desires and also their driving motivations like Baker within the traditional Great Gatsby was just kind of viewed as sort of callous and rude and rich and vapid and from Nick's point of view like that was her but from her point of view she's like she gets this freedom because she's rich and she's going to take advantage of it the only reason why she's allowed to be vapid is because of her wealth and women of lower station probably would like to be too but because of their economic reality they're unable to and then also just kind of seeing her relationship with Daisy just in a new light it's more interesting I'm rambling. I'm gonna get back to reading, but I had that thought and I wanted to speak to it. It's a good move. It's a good move. Over 100 pages has been read and Clay made me a very green, sludgy looking smoothie that I promise actually tastes very good. There's a lot of spinach in here. We need the calcium, all right? Matilda not taking this readathon very seriously. Ma'am, how many pages have you read? That's what I thought. Happy to report. I got dressed, actually, let me show you. Looky here, she put clothes on. She's ready to impress her dentist. You know, my tooth may be not so great, but look at my outfit. <laughs> um, but in all actuality, I am actually going to do a reading sprint right now, I think, on my reading chair. Very, very serious reading sprint. I've passed the 150 page mark of The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nivo and continuing to like it. I do really love like the dreamlike quality to it. I feel like she really captured the spirit of Gatsby and really brought it to a new and interesting place. So we're gonna keep reading right now. reading check-in because I have just about 60 pages left of The Chosen and the Beautiful, which also means I have read 560 pages so far, so pretty good. And then obviously when I finish this, I'll be at 620, and then I'm going to hopefully try to read at least 80 pages of this book before I have to go to my dentist appointment, which would bring me to about 
700 pages but i'm checking in because i want to talk about this book which has been really interesting so far so here's what i would say about this particular story it is a fantasy um but i wouldn't say it's like heavy on the fantastical it's almost like a dash or an enhancement like oftentimes magic isn't talked about at all until it's kind of pulled out of a drawer let's say to enhance the moment or the situation and gatsby obviously uses magic to kind of enhance his particular parties but obviously the power of Gatsby's parties would persist even without magic if that makes sense but I do feel like it is an interesting ad and I do feel like it has enhanced the overall atmosphere and dreamlike quality of the story the other interesting thing is structurally the timeline of this book is kind of shifting all over the place which I like it sort of enhances again that dreamlike balmy vibe of the story like nothing about it feels quite so tangible nothing about it feels so real especially these people i mean they're all so rich and they're kind of just doing what they want at all times and they also are seemingly chasing things that feel unattainable which brings us to the mess that is everyone's there's basically like a pentagon <laughs> triangle i mean obviously you would expect the dramatic tension that exists between Daisy and Gatsby, which is very familiar, and then Jordan and Nick's relationship, but how things have kind of evolved and meshed within this particular book, because again, it's a queer imagining. There are feelings between Nick and Gatsby, there's feelings between Daisy and Jordan, and then all of those characters are kind of intermeshed in each I'd also say, um, Nouveau has done a really good job kind of creating the sense of Daisy and Gatsby's characters, of both of them being these sort of like flames that people are drawn to and obviously they're constantly drawn to each other and it's a mess but also like people are drawn to them individually like Jordan is drawn to Daisy and is kind of pulled into her quagmire in a variety of ways throughout her life and then Nick has been pulled to Gatsby and he's kind of fighting and he doesn't really recognize it for what it is and then everyone is pulled towards each other just due to the almost fateful tragedy that is their romance but also nothing about it feels all that romantic which i also feel like the author has done a good job capturing it's more about like the obsession of it all like possession like everyone is solely themselves but they almost feel like they either want to be possessed or to possess other people it doesn't feel very romantic at any point in time which i feel like is important when i think about the great gatsby because i don't think the great gatsby is in any point romantic and i do feel like the vibe of that is being captured again i am just continuing to enjoy our main character which is jordan baker and her point of view for for this particular story i just think it's a much more interesting angle obviously jordan herself is very headstrong very driven and isn't gonna let anyone kind of tell her what to do which i think is great and we obviously saw that in gatsby but i think there's so much more nuance to her character within this book obviously again growing up vietnamese within very white wealthy circles at the turn of the century in america she's also very used to being treated as an other as an outsider as an oddity so seeing her navigate these circles as her bold non-apologetic self i think is great and in general i feel like when i read the great gatsby in the past i kind of hated everyone but with this particular book like i hate everyone but jordan i'm like jordan do your thing you know sleep with her sleep with him don't call them back like i don't care girl like do whatever you want like i'm team jordan baker and her mess is much more interesting to me than everyone else's mess so i'm just kind of like get it together if that makes sense but i have 60 pages of this book left i just think this so far has been a very effective retelling of a book i feel like the author's ads from the magic to the change of character pov have been great obviously i will say like as someone who's familiar with the great gatsby it's not like this is crazy different like there's some clear twists and changes but like it's still the story of the great gatsby so if you're familiar with the story of the great gatsby at least so far like you're gonna kind of know what's gonna happen next for that reason i wouldn't say i'm like flying through it because i kind of know what's gonna happen but i at least appreciate the change in the linear style of the writing and the change of the point of view i do think that has been very effective but i'm now gonna read the last 60 pages of this and then start my third book i need to make lunch among other things but just wanted to say i've read I'm not failing this 24 hour readathon too much. Matilda's the Gatsby of our household. She's been fretting after her long lost love her entire life.
It's time to move on, Matilda. Hey, Millie, guess what? I finished my book. Solid, four star read. It was interesting, didn't blow my mind. I really enjoyed the changes as I keep saying it over and over again. Now I'm gonna start my third book of this 24 hour readathon vlog. But first I wanna make some toast. Cause I love toast. Let it be said, let it be said, this is actually a bread stand channel. I love bread so much. So I'm gonna make some toast and enjoy. Then I'll make lunch. But first I want a little aperitif of some carbs. <laughs> Matilda has the zoomies and I always think she just looks like a little potato with legs. You still zooming around? Cool. Oh. I know, I think she's over having, oh, no. She's still zooming, oh, she's so fast, fast as lightning. So, so agile she is, Clay. I forgot to record, but I was doing bread ASMR. I'll, I'll replicate it, oh, pretty great. Ooh, ooh, yes. <laughs> Lunch is underway. I made a huge pot of beef vegetable soup earlier this week, so I've just been reheating it for Clay and I for lunch, so there we go. Soup is heated. I tore this towel, my bowl was really hot. Um, and I'm watching some Real Housewives of Salt Lake City before I start my third book down there. Does anyone else's dog just like become complete pudding when you put a sweater on? It gets chilly, Millie, you need the warmth that she just gives up. Like, what is happening right now? <laughs> Just about to start chapter seven. I've decided to listen to the audiobook of this. Matilda is still very much a slug. Clay's doing some holiday wrapping over there. But so far, I am delighted by this book. I knew I would be. It basically follows our main character, September, and her adventures and misadventures in a place called Fairyland. And the writing is just absolutely whimsical. Catherine M. Valente is just, she just creates one of the best middle grade fantasy worlds. It also is a bit dark and just so, 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 so clever. So I've been really liking the audiobook. This one is narrated by a narrator. The first one, the author did it, which was fine, but I'm definitely preferring this one quite a bit more. So I'm gonna keep listening to it. I have about an hour left of my readathon before I have to go to the dentist. So I'm just gonna keep chugging along. I think I've read about 50 or 60 pages of this, so I should be on track to hit my 700 page goal but uh, I'm gonna press play. Hi everyone, it's Reagan, and welcome to the end of the vlog. The next day, I'm happy to report my dental procedure went just about as well as it could, so that's great news. But I mostly wanted to pop in and wrap up everything I was able to read as I was able to pass the 700 page mark, focusing first and foremost on The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland by Catherine M. Valente, because this is the book I've talked about the least so far in this video, but I did read about 75, 80 pages of this. And first and foremost, I am obsessed with the audiobook. Just hearing a story written like this told is just so delightful. I just feel transformed. Like, everything about it from the narrators, like ability to do different voices and just like how she herself is capturing the story is excellent. And then obviously the story itself is just so visual and so whimsical. So I feel like listening to it is even kind of elevating the overall experience that I had when I read the first one. But I am just loving this series so much and I definitely want to read more books by Catherine M. Valente once I catch up on this particular middle grade series, but it's just so original and unique. And it also just has this sense too of like a little bit of darkness, a little bit of like running away from reality, I guess. What I mean by that is that this falls our main character September and she's basically confronting like harrowing things like in her mortal world as well as in fairyland. I'm pretty sure this book is set during World War II. And so she's escaping this reality of ration cards, worrying about her father who is not home and missing her mother who is working long hours as an engineer. And then we follow her also in fairyland, which absolutely dazzles her. But she also realizes that like adventure kind of comes with the cost. It's not just easy, breezy, beautiful, delicious and fun. Like there are real stakes also occurring in fairyland. And we saw her encounter a lot of treacherous obstacles. And I feel like that's going to continue in book two, despite the fact that she was hoping now that she goes back to fairyland after the events of book one things would be delightful hunky-dory but that's not so much the case 
I just love reading from September's point of view. I also feel like she has experienced a lot of growth from book one to book two. Um, and seeing her and her friends, it's just delightful and mesmerizing. It's just such a good middle grade series. I could not talk about it more positively. Obviously, besides this, which I'm going to continue to listen to whilst I play Breath of the Wild, I also read The Entirety of the Way Back by Gabrielle Savitt, which is another very whimsical and dark sort of fairy tale esque story about two people on the brink of adulthood, kind of trying to escape their way back from a land of the demons. Very much inspired by Jewish folklore. I thought it was really great. I really enjoyed the writing style as well. And then I also read a queer and magical reimagining of The Great Gatsby, which I also talked about at length. And this is by Niveau, and I really enjoyed this as well. And I would say, all in all, a very successful vlog. I read three beautiful books that were beautifully written and very imaginative. Some of my favorite kinds of stories to consume also allowed me to slowly make my way to my reading goal before the end of this year which I'm also not too mad about but I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and I will see you soon with another one soon goodbye